I'm trained by Linusso at Channels Television here in Lagos. I'm joined by Esther Guthrie Eward at Voice of America in Washington. Thanks. I'm Esther Githui. You are at our global headquarters in Washington, D.C. Happy to be with you again for another edition of Africa 54. Let's start off with a look at how the U.S. Agency for International Development is assisting 250,000 vulnerable Nigerians. Chamberlain Uso in Lagos brings you that story. Well, thanks, Esther. Right since the inception of an intervention program by the United States Agency for International Development for Vulnerable Persons in Nigeria, over 250,000 persons living with HIV in the country have been reached. Speaking at an event in Abuja marking five years of the program, the agency's mission director, Stephen Haken, explains that healthcare services as well as skills development have been provided to the most vulnerable ones amongst them. In Nigeria, 17.5 million children are orphans or vulnerable children. 2.5 million of these are children whose parents died of AIDS. Although it is customary for extended family and community members to care for orphans and vulnerable children, the capacity and resources of these individuals and households have been overstretched by the growing number of vulnerable persons and the complexity of their needs. Five years ago, the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, adopted a program for vulnerable persons, and it appears that this intervention is yielding results. Because of the head of this looping three, I was able to also be in school. And also, they also uh, employed me in making oil selling. I'm selling the making oil. And the interest in me, I was paid a job to the hospital, GH Oil, to collect my jobs. I bought 5,500 naira to perceive. Three, three weeks, before three months, I sold them at the age of rate of 3, 3, 4, 4, 000. Before a month, I made double of what I, I put in gold. Funded under this activity. The mission director for USAID explains how the intervention is assisting vulnerable persons. Implemented by the Health Initiatives for Safety and Stability in Africa, LOPEN 3 has provided more than 184,000 vulnerable children and their households with protection, care, and support services since 2014. It also provided critically needed assistance to 48,000 of these vulnerable children's caregivers. These services included education, health care services, nutrition and food security, psychosocial support, household economic strengthening, and legal protection. The activity helped these populations obtain equitable access to quality health services and helped community health systems become more responsive to their needs. Five states, namely Akwaibom, Cross River, Eboyi, Adamawa and Kano states benefited from the program. Hopefully this will help beneficiaries live healthy lives and help them contribute their quota to national development. So joining us to talk about other key areas of external intervention for vulnerable groups is Ibironke Adego, former treasurer of the Central Association of All Nigerians in the UK and an education advocate. She joins us from London. Welcome to the program. Let's start with your impression of available platforms for the engagement of Nigerians in the diaspora, which is the essence of the establishment of the National Diaspora Commission. The National Diaspora Commission is a welcome development. This is something the diasporans have been clamoring for. And under the leadership of Honorable Abike W. Yarewa, we are so happy that that commission has come to stay. It's going to be a rallying point for all diasporans to deposit all their resources and their knowledge and whatever they can send to Nigeria to uphold and to develop our country in Nigeria. Well, in time past, attention was on remittances from Nigerian diaspora populations around the world, which has a significant effect on the economy. But now, there's a growing awareness of the fact that this set of Nigerians can play more active roles in national development. For you, what areas, what other areas of development can Nigerians abroad make the most impact? 
I mean, without a doubt, our remittances are still very important. However, we've realized that our skill set is more important now because we've developed our skill sets in the Western world. And now is the time to actually export those skill sets to Nigeria because it seems we need it more in Nigeria than in the Western world. So our resources are things we are trying to export now. You're involved in advocacy for out-of-school children. There are several intervention areas which are critical to increasing the number of children who enroll and stay in school. What aspects are you focusing on? Yeah, basically what it is is that whenever I come to Nigeria, I see a whole lot of kids on the streets when they are meant to be in school. And it keeps me awake at night because I'm thinking these are the people that are meant to be the future of Nigeria. So what kind of future are we building for ourselves in Nigeria? Are we building a, a, a country that would have illiterates governing us? So I thought it would be a good idea to champion the initiative of getting the kids off the street and into the classroom. And that's why the AIA Foundation is coming to Nigeria this month to actually start that campaign to make sure during school hours, all the kids are in the classroom rather than on the street. Also, we are interested in the mm -hmm. girl child because as you know, um, based on our orientation, it's like, oh, the girl child education is not important because the woman tends to end up in the kitchen. That is so old school. Women are now in high places. So we need to ensure that the girl child gets good education to make sure they can aspire to higher positions in future. All right, Biranke Adagbo, former treasurer of the Central Association of All Nigerians in the UK and an education advocate, thank you for joining us today on Africa 54. Thanks for having me.